When will I be YouTube famous? I don't know. Probably never. But what I do know is that this is 4F Beauty and if I have done my editing job correctly, you should be watching me in black and white right now. Now, you will know from the thumbnail, the title and if you have read any of it, uh, the description. That this is another of the three continents one palette series where I collab with the uh, beautiful Nona and the delightful Laura where we all do a look using the same palette. The palette this time is one that I know Nona is going to be absolutely cock a hoop that we're using because orange is pretty much her favourite eyeshadow colour. And this Soul palette is very, very orange toned. So, as I have said for some considerable time now, off here echoed elsewhere in other less imaginative channels but I am backed by Sammy the Sloth Straw and he agrees you should uh, grab a drink Grab a snack, put your feet up, and enjoy. Because here it comes. Hey, my lovelies, welcome back from the intro. Okay, you will have seen this in the intro. Now, this is the ColourPop Soul palette. Two of my shades always seem to want to come out, so I will show it to you very gingerly at a very odd angle and try not to blind you with the mirror. So as you can see this was one of the original nine pan palettes that um, Colourpop bought out. Obviously they've since done Orange You Like and the peach one and I can't think of the name of it. It'll come to me at some point. Probably two o'clock in the morning. But we have decided that this is our palette for this month and rather than challenges we've given ourselves free choice. Yay! I do like a free choice month because it means I don't have to concentrate on making sure I'm using the shades that I'm meant to be using rather than the shades that my brush gets drawn towards. Right, as ever this is a teaching channel so I'll be going at a speed that everyone should be able to keep up with. This is partly in, partly, partly in deference uh, to my chronic pain levels which apparently are causing me to create new words like partly. You're welcome. Uh, I will also be zoomed in very tightly so that you only see my eyes this is partly for your benefit so you don't see me constantly wincing in pain uh, and also so that you can actually see what's going on uh, it does mean that when I'm looking down to change brushes, clean brushes, add more pigment you're going to see my hairline but at least if you're struggling with your eyesight when you have no glasses on and are watching me on a rather small phone screen you should be able to see what's going on. Right. Um, I've seen a lot of people, including big beauty gurus, uh, say that they've got hooded lids when in actuality they have deep set eyes. So, whilst the way that makeup wears on them through the day is very similar, the application in terms of getting the best overall look and making it last as long as possible 
are quite different. So I'm going to insert a clip in just a moment, it will be very up close and personal, just my eyes, where I will talk you through how to work out which type of eye you have and the workaround for each eye and then I'll be back at the other end to play with some of these pigments. See you then. Now, um, my eyes have this primer on it. This is the Crime Pebble Primer in blank page cotton. I do have a discount code for this. It is not affiliated. I don't earn money from it. But if you use my code, you save, I think it's 15%. And I earn pebbles that I can offset against future purchases from them. The reason I love the Chrome Pebble Primer is because it's it goes on like a cream, but it has a powdery finish. So unlike when you use a concealer or like a MAC paint pot for example, you have the trade-off between do I set it so I can blend easily or do I leave it tacky so that I get the full impact of colour. You don't have that trade-off with this, you can blend on it instantly and you don't lose any of the colour. Now she does six different shades of this at the moment. White is the lightest, the deepest two are a chocolate brown and a black. Then there are three different skin tone shades as well, so you should be able to find one that will work for you. Um, I apply this with a flat brush, just a very light layer, and then I buff it over with a fluffy blending brush to take any excess off and to make sure I've got a nice even layer across the eye. Now, I've got deep set eyes, so I get the same issues that people with hooded lids get. I get transference of colour onto the upper lid. If I'm cutting my crease, I have to cut onto the upper lid, not just through the socket. And if I'm using glitter, even with glitter glue, I get a bare patch in the middle. Because people with hooded lids get the same symptoms as people with deep set eyes, I see a lot of people with deep set eyes thinking they have hooded lids when they don't. So they follow the guidelines for hooded lids and wonder why their eyes still don't look right. So, I'm going to explain very easily for you how to tell the difference and what the two workarounds are. With my brows relaxed and looking straight forward, you can see all of my mobile lid from inner to outer corner. You can't see a lot of it, but you can see it. So I haven't got hooded lids. It's only if this upper lid comes down and completely covers part or all of the mobile lid that you have a full or a half hooded lid or what's known as a mono or an Asian eye. I'm going to demonstrate on this eye deep set eyes because this is the eye that I'm blind in so I'll stay on screen and in focus. If I cover a visible mobile lid and close my eye you can see I've got as much if not more lid that tucks back away out of sight. And if I do the same on the top lid, the static lid, you can see I've got about the same amount of lid again that tucks back away out of sight when the eyes open. And it's those two bits of lid rubbing together that give me the same issues that hooded lids get. So, what are the workarounds? If you have hooded lids, get a brush, something like this, or a pencil brush. Sketch out on your static lid where you want your new crease to fall. Now obviously that's going to reduce the space between the crease and the brow. So just use smaller blending brushes, or if necessary, take the colour right up to the brow, instead of leaving a gap. If you have deep set eyes like myself, all we need to do when we're putting the colour through the crease, which nine times out of ten will be the deepest colour that we're using. Just sit back, relax your brows and make sure you've brought it up high enough that you can see it when your eyes are open. So, two very different workarounds for two very different types of lids but that have very similar issues. Hey my lovelies, I am back. 
Okay, I'm starting off with a fluffy brush. It's clean, it's just stained. The perils of white bristles, unfortunately. Um, I am going to start off with. Ooh. It's literally just three O's. Ooh. Um, and I'm going to do the. Viennese Waltz Blend. Oh, there's a lot of kick up in this pan. Look at that. Uh, but you do at least get pigment on your brush. Look at that. Right, always hold the brush at the very end. If it's a nice long handle, you can brace it against the palm of your hand to stabilise it a bit. And the Viennese Waltz Blend is natural turns towards the nose, a fleckle when we get there, and reverse turns to come back again. And why do I always notice eye boogers after I've pressed record? There we go. Right. The reason for this is I'm 46 years old. I've lost over 12 stone. That's over 200 pounds. The skin on my eyelids moves. But I know slim 20 year olds who have the same issue. Um, so by doing the Viennese Waltz rather than the windscreen wiper blend, we get a much cleaner finish so you don't tend to get the tiger striping or barcoding finish that you can get with the windscreen wiper right i'm going to start blending this and chat to you a little bit about the two ladies that i'm collabing with now this is i believe our 12th episode of this particular series so you must be pretty new to my channel if you don't already know who they are however assuming that you are and therefore do not allow me to give you a little bit of background on the two ladies now the whole idea for this collab was started by Nona She's the hashtag my so called life 1977. And she put a thing up on Insta saying she wanted to start doing a collab series using the ColourPop 9 pan monochromatic palettes. Was anybody else interested? And um, both myself and Laura gold star work said yep count us in we love that idea what do we got to do um, and that's that's really where it started from to be quite honest um, I can't remember which of us came up with the name but three continents one palette is because quite literally I'm in Europe, in the UK, Nona is in America, and Laura is in New Zealand, so the Australasia continent. So, three continents, one palette was born, and uh, we've had lots of fun and games since. Uh, at one point, Laura ran out of the nine pan palettes because Laura's actually an artist, not just a makeup artist, she's an artist. She paints. A um, number of times I'm watching a film of hers and I'm completely distracted by her lovely paintings that she has behind her that she's actually done herself. Um, so she's got a lot of colour knowledge, colour blending knowledge, etc. So a lot of the palettes she didn't bother to buy because she's like, well, I've got all of those shades using this, this, this and this. And obviously getting stuff to New Zealand costs considerably more because they are on an island halfway around the world from America, basically. Right. I always sit back and check that they match, 
because your eyes are not symmetrical and sometimes you have to do a slightly different shape one side to the other to get them to look the same. So I'm just cleaning the brush on a clean washcloth. As you can see, this one is continuing to stain the brush. And then I shall go into Dynamite to blend out the top edge. So yeah, Laura was like, okay girls, I'm going to have to stop now because I've run out of palettes. So I had a chat to Nona and I'm like, I don't want Laura to have to drop out. Shall we say to her that she can just use whatever colours she's already got to create the same shades that are in the palette? And then she can continue to to do the series with us. And Nona's like, yes, I was wondering how we could still include her. That sounds great. So that's what we did. Um, you know, I've I've learned a lot from Laura. I had quite a bit of colour knowledge anyway from working in the print company in a, in a, in a print world. Uh, for three years so you know four colour process you know, colour mixing pantone mixing all that sort of thing um, but I've learned a lot from her I always reference after the Aha Honey palette came out I mean I'd blended yellows with greens with oranges with reds with browns um, I'd never managed to successfully blend them with purples without it going muddy. But Laura did a film which explained how to blend colours together like the purple and the yellow, which wouldn't normally work together. And it was just amazing, it really was. I just. I learned so much from her that day. Am I going to cut my crease today? It'll make it quite a long film. Yeah, I've not cut my crease for a while. I might do that. Because I've got the Gerard Clean Canvas in white. And I want to give that a try. So, let me just... Grab a brush. Now the brushes that I like using to do this sort of thing are actually brushes designed for doing um, acrylic nail art. But what I like about them is they can come very very thin so I'm going to do I'm going to show you how I cut the crease this side and do that in normal speed and then when I do this one I'll speed it up so yeah I learned an awful lot from uh, Laura this is the Gerard clean canvas in white it's just arrived I now have it in white medium and in fair. Now, the easiest way to cut your crease regardless of your eye shape and to make sure you actually get the right shape for your eye is to get some excess on your brush and just slap it quite randomly along the outer edge of your eye like that and then open your eye and blink a few times that then copies it up to your upper lid so you can see the shape 
you need to create you can then follow it and then you'll know that you've definitely got the right shape for your particular eye because with deep set eyes you can't just do the mobile lid so I'm just going to spread this across and get a nice smooth blend all the way across the eye take it out further than I need to go because I can tidy up with a micellar wipe and then wipe the brush clean and using it dry just pat over the whole area this will lift up any excess either concealer or eyeshadow base or whatever you're using to cut your crease with so that you don't end up with it blending in with whatever pigment you're about to put down and therefore changing the colour of it and you just keep going over it until it's just sticky but it's not bringing huge amounts back up on the brush you want a little bit of stickiness to hold on to the shimmer that we're going to apply because obviously you're not going to apply the shimmer wet because it will just smudge this base you can go in with your finger if you want but I just find that a brush is far far more accurate and then I'll have a second brush, slightly smaller, that I will use to go into the pigment. And I think I'm going to use uh, Anthem today. And I'm just going to apply this over the lid. like so right so while this happens I'll speed you up I'll finish doing this side and then I'll come across and do this one Put you know it's going before I be Jeffrey. Snap a pick. Open P. 
PR packages. Laura, I love that lash. Sponsored post, yet I need cash. Manny, we're looking hot. House is full of shit I bought. Nikita, we'll turn you on. See you whores at BeautyCon. I've been living out my beauty guru fantasy. Looking flawless with my beauty guru family. It's so perfect in my time, I saw the beauty guru life. So if you like this video, then please subscribe. Champagne pop, keep it stocked up. You can also use my code for this product. If I shut you out, I'll think I'd break your social blade. I'll be snapping out with Nikki in the ocean shade. Jacqueline, we're on a jet, waiting for my face to set. Classy, girl, let's collab. Lily lashes looking fab. Redman, we're fucking stars. Vlogging in our matching cars. Jackie, this gloss is fruity. See you, sisters, badge and beauty. I've been living out my beauty guru fantasy. Looking flawless with my beauty guru family. It's so perfect in my time, I saw the beauty guru life. So if you like this video, then please subscribe. Feeding nothing, I can go on a support free. If I shut you out, I'll think I'd break your social blade. Social blade, social blade. Think I'd break your social blade. If I shut you out, I'll think I'd break your social blade. Okay, so that is that bit done. Okay, I'm going to pause you while I go and pop some base products and stuff on. Um, I may, I've got a, um, got a rather nice gold, um, water activated liner from Glisten Cosmetics. I may use, um, a, a fine brush just to re-emphasise that line. I'll see how it looks once I've got the foundation on. Um, for you there's going to be absolutely no delay at all, it'll be pretty much bloody instant uh, when I shall be back to finish off this eye look with you. I've got a bit of work to do now, so I'll see you in just a moment. Right my lovelies, I am back. As you can see I decided to add the little gold Um You can use makeup brushes like this but my preference is to actually go and buy an artist's brush because can you see the difference in how fine the point is between those two so in terms of getting a straight accurate not too thick line these are my choice in terms of brushes um, I've got varying sizes of them depending on what type of lines I want to create so if I'm doing something um, more ornamental shall we say um, I can use a larger brush to cover a bigger area but in terms of doing 
fine lines like that, your artist's paintbrush that you can get from an art supply store is far far better than any makeup brush you can buy. I did my soap brows with the pink honey strawberry thingy. Uh, they recommend using it wet, I recommend using it dry because then it's a bit sticky on your brows which means when you then apply the powder to it, in this case I used uh, Unwind which is the brown here the powder has something to stick to it also then sets the soap in place so you get a really good brow that will last you through pretty much most of the day right I'm going in with this flat topped brush um, I'm going to go into uh, one of the shimmers because I want the red which is motel so I'm just going to tap that off on the washcloth just before I apply to my under eye because obviously I don't want fall out at this stage. Not now that I've successfully done my face. I always flinch with this eye because obviously being blind in it I don't have any peripheral vision and the viewfinder when you've not got your contact lens in or your glasses on it's quite a long way away. This is the brush from the Tarte Graveyard Girl palette, flat topped but chunky, which is great for getting under your lashes and blending out, but you can use any densely packed uh, blending brush or smudging brush. And I'm going to go into New Digs, which is the lightest of the mattes, and just use that to really gently buff out the lower lash line. I have since managed to find some pencils that will actually work on my waterline without causing too much irritation and without making my eyes stream too much but my eyes are very sensitive today and are quite watery even before I started putting makeup on. But as the pain level was only about seven today whether my eyes are watery or not, I take advantage and film with it because if I get a 7 today, I'm probably going to be an off the scale tomorrow and I don't have any films ready for the rest of this week. Right. This is a brush that I got from, God, eBay well over a decade ago now well over and I am going to grab the Juvia's Tribe Highlighter Volume 3 which looks like this yes it's hard pan but you can actually still get pigment up off of it which is good I'm going to pop a little bit of this just up under the tail of the brow there. Just over the top of the colour. And then again in a corner. I like to bring mine under the tear duct and blend it in with the under eye as well. I just think for my eye shape that finishes the look off nicely, especially when I'm not using a pencil in my waterline. 
Right, my lovelies, I'm going to pause you one last time. I'm going to chuck some more of this on my face, put some mascara on, choose a lippy, do something with the hair. <laughs> and I'll be back with my finished look. Don't go anywhere. I am back. I suddenly realised that when I speeded up, I stopped telling you about the girls. Right, I told you about Laura and the fact that she's an artist and in my mind she sounds like Titania, Queen of the Fairies. When I was reading um, Midsummer Night's Dream I suddenly realised I was hearing Laura's voice as Titania so she is my Queen of the Fairies. Nona is... she's probably one of the nicest people on YouTube. She always has something nice to say. You could absolutely hate the look you've done, she will find something positive in it. Um, and she's just, she's such a wonderful friend. She's, I love it. And I love the fact that when I first met her, she was very much a neutral coloured girl. And now she's sort of, she's spreading her wings and she's like a butterfly coming out of the cocoon and she's, she's spreading into colour now and it's, it's just, it's lovely to see her enjoying playing with colours, you know. Hmm. I need to have a bit of a wiggle, hang on. I probably will cut the wiggle out, but if I didn't, yeah, that, that was me wiggling. I usually cut most of those out. Right, this is my finished look using the Sol palette. Uh, the mascara I used was the uh, Revolution Blowout Cannabis Sativa Mascara. The Lippy is the Ciate Glitter Flip in Whisper. I love this shade. And the more you, you apply the, um, the colour in a, in a thin layer, don't layer it up, just one thin layer. And it's opaque enough to give you depth of colour with just one coat. Give it a couple of minutes, once it's dry you press your lips together and you get this gorgeous sort of mica glitter effect but you don't feel the glitter pigments it's not like those glitter lipsticks where it feels like you've got sugar stuck to your, your lips it's and throughout the day you can continue to do that and it, it reactivates the mica in it don't know how they've done it but it's brilliant and this whisper shade is just the perfect nude for me this this really is just my perfect lippy so, I really hope that you have enjoyed uh, watching my film and watching me blether and seeing how I work out which area of my eyes needs to be cut out if I'm doing a cut crease. Um, I really, really like these. Um, clean canvases from Gerard. They give a much smoother, more opaque finish than um, even my Tarte Shape Tape does. And they cling to the pigments better. You get a more accurate, particularly if you're using the white underneath it, you get a much more accurate colour match to what is actually in the pan itself. So, trusting that you've enjoyed this, it'd be awesome if you could uh, just hit that like button for me, leave me a bit of a comment. Um, if you are one of my 4F babies, please double check you're still subscribed. YouTube are still unsubscribing people at a rate of knots, but rather cheekily they're leaving my films in your recommended section, so it's not obvious that you've been culled. Um, it's also worth, although YouTube don't seem to be sending emails out at the moment, it's worth checking your notification status, not just for me, but for all the channels you watch, because all of my notifications that I'd got set up had been knocked back from all to personalised. So 
if YouTube do decide to change their mind and suddenly start sending emails again, you're not actually going to see them unless you've got it set as all because with personalised you just you just don't get them. I've found anyway. Uh, if you're new here, either from Nona or Laura's channel, or you've tripped over me some other way, hi, hello, welcome, I hope you enjoyed it here. Uh, it'd be delightful if you would like to join the 4F family. We are the nicest family on YouTube and it's super easy to do. You hit that red subscribe button down there and turn it grey, then you ring my bell. Ring my bell and choose all notifications in the hope that YouTube starts sending emails again. In the meantime, as I have said for what feels like time immemorial now, I've got an awful lot of other films you can watch. Um, I've got all the preceding episodes of the Three Continents One Palette. I've got other collabs, I've got other tutorials, product reviews, uh, challenges, tags, I even read my favourite poem in one of them. So uh, you can certainly find something I hope that will interest you on my channel. So you know, if you've got a bit of time to kill and you want a little bit of me time, grab a drink. Grab a snack, put your feet up, pick a playlist, get comfy, and indulge. Right, my lovelies, once you've done all of that, whether you are new here, or whether you are part of my 4F family already, I'm going to need you to go over to Laura's channel and to Nona's channel and check out their films. Which colours will they have chosen on their free choice with this palette? Will either of them have done a cut crease? Will they have added accoutrements? Or will they have most likely I've done a look that completely blows mine out of the water and back again. Now the only way to find this out is to go to their channels and watch their films. To make this easy for you, I have linked both their channels and their films in the description box. So you can easily pop over and check them out. Right, my lovelies. As ever, all that remains for me to say is you'll stay fabulous and I will see you next time. Bye for now.